Hi, in this video, I'll be discussing various dental considerations in pregnant patients. So in the previous video, I've explained you the various time periods of trimesters. We have first, second and third trimester. So in this video, let's try to understand what are all the treatments we can perform depending upon the trimester in which the patient is in. And also let's discuss the following topics. Patient positioning, hypertension, gestational diabetes, breathing changes in pregnant patients, oral changes which I have discussed in the previous video, water fluoridation and most importantly oral hygiene and the role of nutrition. So starting with various dental considerations. So before that let's try to understand that there is a greater chance for miscarriage or risk for miscarriage is greater in first trimester than compared to other trimesters. This should be kept in mind. And most of the fetal development occurs in the first trimester. Ideally, all dental treatments or elective dental treatments can be performed in second trimester. And several studies have shown that dental treatments are safest to be performed in case of second trimester that is between 13th week to 21st week so this is the time period where almost all dental treatments can be performed safely the dental treatments such as emergency management or such as oral prophylaxis can be performed in other trimesters also however while dealing with a patient in second and third trimester patient positioning becomes even more important so coming to emergency treatment so we have a patient having an active disease or an abscess in such a scenario emergency management can be done in second third and even in first trimester and studies have shown that emergency management of pregnant patients in first trimester the benefits we obtain as a result of intervention outweigh the risks so that's the reason why we can go for emergency management even in first trimester and also in second and third trimester and then coming to oral prophylaxis or scaling scaling can be done comfortably in all trimesters and coming to polishing of teeth can be performed in almost all trimesters and coming to restorations a moderate sized or a small sized cavity being restored with amalgam or composite or fractured tooth or any abscess tooth so all treatments including root canals can be performed in second trimester even in third trimester however patient positioning becomes a critical factor here let's discuss the patient positioning subsequently and coming to the role of epinephrine as we all know the local anesthesia which we are using contains 1 is to 1 lakh concentration of epinephrine epinephrine containing local anesthesia can be comfortably used in all trimesters however care has to be taken that this epinephrine containing LA is not injected intravascularly so that precaution has to be taken and coming to radiographs radiographs can be taken in all the trimesters however only when necessary we should advise radiographs and even most importantly care has to be taken to protect our pregnant patient from radiation either by using lead aprons or protecting the pregnant patient's thyroid by using a thyroid collar even if a dental assistant is pregnant or if a dentist is pregnant they should use lead aprons in order to save themselves from the radiation and obstetricians advise the use of two aprons instead of one. And now moving on to the second aspect of this topic, patient positioning. As I said, late second and third trimester, patient positioning becomes a critical factor and patient should be positioned in such a way that we should turn the patient to her left side 
with right hip elevated that is left lateral position with right hip elevated the reason is when we make the patient sleep in a supine position what happens is there is increase in pressure from the uterus onto the inferior vena cava thereby leading to supine hypotensive syndrome there is decreased blood flow to the heart from the inferior vena cava because of the pressure from the overlying uterus so, so in order to overcome this problem when making the patient place in a left lateral supine position with right hip elevated so that the pressure onto the vena cava is cut off isn't it so this patient positioning is very much important especially when dealing with pregnant patients in late second trimester or in their third trimester and then moving on to the next aspect hypotension so pregnant patients are more subjected to hypotension or increased or elevated blood pressure hypotension in pregnant patients is considered to be mild if the blood pressure is 140 by 90 mmhg so if it is greater than or equal to 140 by 90 we consider that as a mild in case of pregnant patients if it is greater than or equal to 160 by 110 mmhg we consider it to be severe form of hypertension so close monitoring of blood pressure is mandated in pregnant patients and also there is another aspect that is gestational diabetes so pregnant patients have a risk of developing diabetes and if the patient is using any medication for gestational diabetes then we should ask the patient to get her HbA1c report that is three month hemoglobin test and also fasting glucose levels and closely monitor the glucose levels and coming to breathing changes pregnant patients are susceptible to certain breathing changes like increase in rate of respiration and also dyspnea under no circumstance we should make the patient sleep or place the patient in supine position when these breathing changes happen so you should always keep that in mind so coming to oral changes as i have discussed in the previous video due to increase in levels of certain hormones or due to fluctuations in levels of estrogen and progesterone there can be numerous oral manifestations such as pregnancy induced gingivitis or pregnancy induced pyogenic granuloma erosion xerostomia etc so oral health monitoring should be done closely in pregnant patients and proper treatment should be given when necessary so coming to water fluoridation so if the community water fluoridation is not present in an area where a pregnant patient lives then we should supplement the patient with a sodium fluoride a fluoride agent usually we prescribe a one milligram of sodium fluoride per day either in tablet form or in liquid form from third month to ninth month so that the dentition which is developing within a uh, fetus is not affected and even during breastfeeding we prescribe this tablet so that it has some anti-cariogenic effect in the baby right so now the last aspect we should always stress on good oral hygiene periodontal health has to be monitored closely and we should also stress on nutrition in case of pregnant patient and if necessary during dental treatments to a pregnant patient if any doubt arises or if in case we are in a dilemma whether to treat the patient or not we should always send the pregnant patient to obstetrician for consultation we should take the opinion from a gynecologist and then proceed accordingly that's very very important so this is in brief about dental considerations in pregnant patients